Margie, being an affiliate of Haskins Lab, is our official host. So good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to see see those of you who didn't make it in last night. I'm happy to see you this morning. Um, I grew up in New Haven, um, so welcome to New Haven. Um, and I worked at Haskins um, for 10 years every day here, and then um, I'm now affiliated as a research affiliate. And so I have a great deal of respect for research lab. Um, my first mentor, Isabel Liberman, actually worked at Haskins Laboratories. Um, I didn't realize what an incredible researcher she was or how powerful her research um, was in terms of guiding me, but it guided me and has continued to guide me through my um, professional life. Um, I taught my first year of teaching in special ed was under 94142, aka IDEA. So I've really seen incredible um, change over the many years that I've been doing this terrific work. And it's just an incredible honor to be with all of you uh, today and tomorrow. Um, if you notice our first slide, um, we want you to know that as we're collaborating, um, we're going to have fun. Sister, Sister Cynthia is, uh, is gathering her flock her 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 uh, to join the movement, and we hope this is going to propel a movement. Uh, the goals, the goals of for today and tomorrow and, and on, um, are that we want to continue to learn um, and educate so that we build our team and we build a movement. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we go on. We're gonna connect the state movements. So you all represent state movements that are already in place, that are incredibly strong, and um, you have terrific networks. So what we're going to do is to, to connect those movements. And it's all about the kids focusing on enhancing literacy achievement. And then to launch interstate conversations. So we're, we're going to have a lot of conversations today and tomorrow to be able to connect with one another, to build on the work that we've already done. And you can see the five, um, the, the five ways that we'll be doing that. Really, I want us to engage in telling our stories because we believe that that's a great way to learn from one another. And I already heard some stories last night. I look forward to hearing more as the days, as the two days unfold. And what we're trying to do is build this critical mass. And I believe that we have the potential to do that. After spending the two days um, at this conference and meeting people who are just so incredibly passionate, and I, I really believe we're at a, at a very critical point um, in changing. So I hope in five years, when we get to that five-year mark, we'll look back and say that this was the beginning of something very powerful and, and strong. Just to, to go back just a bit in terms of the history of Literate Nation, our origins really began in 2010 um, with IDA, the International Dyslexia Association, um, forming a government affairs committee um, Cynthia Hahn headed that committee. Um, several of you in the room um, that I believe Erickson, um, uh, Cheryl Ward, Ellen Steinberg, um, Laura Colloy is here um, with us, were part of that committee. And it was a very important committee because it began the conversation about literacy legislation and dyslexia law. And when we looked at that, legislation. We said it's good, but it's not good enough. Um, and we, at that point, started a conversation about what are the literacy laws that are in existence around the country? What do they have that, you know, is good? And what do they need to, um, to be stronger and to build this movement? And so over the next couple of years, we looked at 400 research studies um, we synthesized those 400 research studies in order to develop model state literacy legislation. And so the books that you see, the book bases that you see here, Power to Act and Literacy Policy, 
were written and published to and, and distributed in order to present to states what had already occurred and, and to give a blueprint or a template so that states didn't have to reinvent the wheel, didn't have to start from scratch, but could instead build upon what other states have done. So we have you know, our core values right on the left, the leadership, the collaboration, integrity, passion, trust, and gratitude. So, we are building a cultural movement to drive seismic change in literacy outcomes for the seeds community of children. And the seeds, I think everyone now is familiar with our acronym seeds, yes? And just so you all know that you have flash drives with our nice logo on them, the flash drives contain um, several important documents uh, including the document on seeds, um, including emphatic beginning, um, which is also copied and in your folder. It also has the PowerPoints for today and tomorrow. So you'll have the PowerPoints that also contain the notes because in the notes of this PowerPoint, you'll also see links to some other documents that we think will be important for you to be able to refer back to. Um, can the PowerPoint you're referring to be used in our home states? Well, Absolutely, yes. It will also be housed on the website. So we, we did a few tweaks in the last few days, so you can get it. So before I turn it over to <coughs> Cynthia, why, why join Literate Nation? Uh, many have asked and many more will continue to ask. And I think the answer is simple. We all belong to many organizations that do fantastic work. Um, NCLD, IDA, um, you all have organizations within your states. But what we're hoping to do, again, is to unite these organizations, to unite this move movement and ignite this movement so that, as Stuart says, and I think he says it so well, we have common cause here. We have for many years. What we fail to do is find how to bring that common cause to each other, to each other's organizations, and to strengthen each other through that. So that's our hope. And um, again, I'm very happy to be here with all of you today. And it's funny, sir. Look at the bottom. Declaration of Independence for Children. And isn't that weird? I didn't even know you were going to say that. So thank you. Um, OK. <clears throat> We are going to show you what this all-volunteer team has done. <coughs> and um, it just let me go, I'm not um, a PowerPoint wizard, but I have to say the first PowerPoint I ever did was for all of you at the IDA in 2011. And you have forced me to get a little better at it. So I'm going to show you who we are, what we are, so that you can get a good idea of how volunteers can create that army, that army that will create the energy and the action we need to get to our goalpost. So what we have assembled is probably a lot bigger than most organizations, um, I'd say in the country. No, what happened? Wait a minute, I want all my, my pretty pictures. I'm just going to want it to be the best. Oh well, pictures are gone, but I have, um, this is our operations team. We have four core groups within Literate Nation. This core group is all about supporting our other core groups, science, advocacy, and media, um, as well as supporting you. We have um, brought in people from different industries, which is fabulous. We have legal, we have um, fabulous um, foundation lawyers, we have um, great operations. Norma Garza is our, um, our COO. She's also a CPA. We have Tiffany Tidolo in marketing, who is my daughter. I've roped her into this and about 30 of her colleagues. <laughs> so we're going to keep going. Um, Eric is our art director. You'll see a lot of his work today. He is phenomenal. He's a college professor. 
and we also can tap into all of his students. Our webmaster, Sheila Walsh, um, unbelievable the work she's done. We literally have to put the website up for pennies. Um, Jennifer Wolford is a VP at um, ATT. She works in their human resources and she does all of their web education across the world. Brought incredible strength to us. Um, and then we have our next group, which is our media team. Carolyn right now is building a team and we've, um, we have some excellent, I think, ideas. She has a series of editors that will be doing different blogging for us, and we're going to hope, we hope that these bloggers will cross different organizations so that when they start to blog, you guys can put it on your websites, we can put it on our websites. We're also going to have a brand channel manager, so we make sure the messages are always, um, never in conflict, and always supporting our teachers and our kids and our school districts. Um, many videos are coming out. We have a gentleman by the name of uh, Scott Redmond that I think you met in 2011. He's a venture solutionist. He can tap into a number of armies as well. Um, we're going to be doing many webinars. We've already had two this year, which is pretty darn good considering it's only April. Um, but we're also going to do webumentaries, which is Ellen's new word. Um, so that when you get online, there are going to be documentaries of other conferences like this that we can start adding information to. So you have rich resources. Um, we're going to repurpose reports. Um, and I use that word repurpose. We don't want to compete with any organization. There's so much good work out there that our goal is just to highlight the good work that's going on. So reports will be coming out and then our newsletters. We have our science core group that is going to have um, heads, almost little mini, um, I would call them boards, where we bring people together that have deep specialty, teacher preparation, teacher certification, professional development, RTI, which Susan Smart has um, that, implementation, we have Vicki Myers, who's our expert here. Dyslexia and LD, we have a lot of experts in that area, thank goodness. Um, and then our ELL kids, our Latino and Hispanic groups. We've been getting a lot of calls in the last few months. How do we join you? What do we do? Let's come together. So that's exciting. And also um, our Title I, our poverty groups, our kids that are hungry, our homeless kids, they'll be coming into our picture as well. Um, Advocacy, we have Ellen heading advocacy. Let me pull this down. And the way we're looking at advocacy is that we understand that groups can be very powerful when they have similar interests. And at the same time, we need to unite them with other groups. So these are primarily our, our top ones we're seeing now. This is going to grow. Um, we spent all of last year figuring out who we wanted to be. It was a tough road because we had 20, 30 different voices. We knew we wanted to be an all-volunteer organization, but we knew we wanted to represent everyone and be that support group. So that is what you see. I think we are probably larger in staff than a lot of the nonprofits out there. <laughs> and we've had, um, we've calculated now, according to Doug Darling, um, the CFO, we probably have a in-kind budget of staff support running about 1.5 to 1.7 million dollars. <coughs> Everyone who comes to us, we get a commitment of time. We want to know how many hours you can devote a week. Our board members are devoting a minimum of 10 hours to probably a maximum of 50 hours. I think Eric clocked in when we were getting the web out about, he said, he never slept 160 hours or something. It's a committed group, and we're here for all of you. So I'm, I'm really proud of this little team you all have built. Okay, where am I next? Now what I want to, um, I want to set, I'm sorry, you guys, see how good I am at PowerPoint? You're doing great. I like making them. I like the visual part of it. Okay, study this for just a second. I'm going to pull my, my notes out. As you know, um, 
I have the pleasure of sitting on um, nine boards, seven pretty active boards, um, and one I just resigned, so I'm getting better at not saying yes. We had this group in California uh, that I've had the honor of being a founding board member um, for eight, maybe nine years now, and it's called CB. What we've done is we started years ago going to every single school district and collecting the data on the kids. We wanted actionable data. I am a numbers geek, as those who work with me know. Um, what we had to find out is where in the system are we failing because our unemployment rate is quite high in California. And what we found out, and this is what's important to you, is School is all about ensuring that these kids have opportunity and get into the labor market. So let me see if I can do this. We now collect data from birth all the way to the labor market. We collect data that gives us information on where kids are falling out of the system. We have 9,000 schools in San Francisco and California there are only 900 schools that we call our most difficult schools because 90% of the kids are free and reduced lunch, 90% of the kids come from minority backgrounds, but 90% of the kids in those 900 schools also are beating the standards. Why are they successful? We know why, and I'm going to show you on the next slide why, but this is what I want you to focus on. All of our actionable data, this data is so bloody strong that the Gates Foundation just gave us a <coughs> sea of money to get the same data in 15 states. And then we're going to be able to compare states. So data to me is my, um, my role. Oh, I get a little microphone. <laughs> OK, are we ready? almost falling off the table. All the data that we've collected, we've got two years now in, um, in, in about four of the 15 states, plus we have all of California, tell us that there are five pillars of best practices. Our literacy law is actually written around these pillars before I actually had this actionable data to share with you. So when we were doing the literacy law based on science, those 400 documents that we synthesized, the CB work has now confirmed everything we have in literacy law. So let's go over this real quickly. High expectations. One of our mottos, all students reading, no exceptions, no excuses. Those expectations have to be for every single student. Use of data. Data sits in schools and they have it, they don't use it, they don't interpret it, they don't analyze it, but the schools that are great, they do, and guess what? They direct instruction and they direct professional development. Evidence-based instruction and differentiated. What we've learned is good, solid instruction is the same for all kids, just in different doses. So a teacher has to be able to take all of that information we know is important for them to learn and move these kids like racehorses at different levels. Um, teacher knowledge, ha, huh, this, number four, this is our key, deep knowledge, great skills. Our teachers aren't being given that right now in their, their college prep programs. And we know, David, I said, I asked David Myers, who's the CEO of AIR, one of our finest um, Beltway Bandit contract research firms, um, to send me all the data he had, the reports he had on professional development. It doesn't work. It just does not work. They can't find it working. We have to change that game. There are a few exceptions programs like Margie's that can go into the, the schools and work with the teachers and they stay with them for two to three years to change their habits. But the schools that are doing well, their teachers are soaring. And then the other thing that we're doing in the SERP work, a lot of you know my SERP work and I want you to keep following it because SERP is going to bring middle school literacy 
into the work we're doing. Collaboration, Dick Elmore, Harvard University, last 20 years, how do people learn? We learn by working together. We learn from each other. So, I love that. How's my time? Surf. Elmore, surf. Let's go. SERP is Strategic Education Research Partnership. We spun off of the National Academy of Sciences about, um, I think it's been eight or nine years. And what we do is we take our great minds in the universities and we embed them into the school district. And we sit around tables like this, where we have the teachers on one side <laughs> and the curriculum directors and the superintendents and the principals, and we have our academics on the other side. And they don't get along very well the first month because there isn't a lot of respect. But by the second and third month, they have become a family and a team. And the, the schools ask our academics to please go back and research problems of practice. So we research, and then we develop new programs, and then we implement. So we call ourselves an RD&I house. And um, I think it's some of the best science we have going on right now because we're creating product and it's all free, the whole nation. And we have about 1,100 teachers a day downloading our work. Because we create for a science teacher an entire course syllabi for them to download every week with actionable <coughs> vocabulary, academic vocabulary, so all these middle schools are ready to succeed in high school and in college. We also test them for their reading scores, We've created a STARRY program that's all about reading and invention in middle school. And these kids are soaring. We have randomized controlled trials going on because we have a lot of grants coming out of the IES right now. And we're going to incorporate all of that into the work we're doing too. Um, we just, we couldn't do it by this means. Can people in this room access that? Oh yes, it's free on the web. Where? Surf? Surfinstitute.org. Thank you. Now, uh, yes, I love it. Okay, two minutes, two minutes. I have to see what I have. I'm going to go really quickly here what our back office supports are. Um, we're going to coordinate visions, missions. We're going to help you write your business plans. I'm big into quarterly objectives, as our team will tell you. Um, how to structure teams, infrastructure you need, leadership and development, building grassroots. We have the expertise that I talked about of our four core groups. I think one of the biggest things you're going to see today is our virtual gathering platform that Posey's going to speak about. This is where we're going to keep tools for you and your teams that you can get anytime, anyplace. We also have, as I spoke, the marketing, legal, financial operations expertise on our teams. If you need an expert, come to us. We will reach out into our communities and we'll find it. Posey's also going to show you that a Literate Nation can give you your own site within our site. And Carolyn's going to tell you about how we're going to social network. You're also all invited to use our 501c3. Um, you have to live within some of the guidelines, but any money that you raise to do your work, we will be able to, all but 5%, send it all back to you so you can do your fundraising and build your organizations without waiting a year or two for a 501c3. Um, we will take your state and put it in your own logo if you'd like. We can provide you business cards. You can utilize our corporate office address, master phone numbers and fax. And um, if you don't have your own emails and you want an organization to really unite, we can give you um, email addresses off our platform. We are an asset Can we clap just a little bit? Okay, that worked. <laughs> our greatest asset, really, um, our, our core of volunteers. We're just, we're here to serve. We have to unite and support each other. And as we know from this map and those that you've been using, this is a highly complex system. And we need the best minds to figure it out. I'll turn it, did I do it? You did it. To, uh, on task. Fifteen seconds. Um, <laughs> just a quick question.